Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. As promised, I was going to release another Cryptid of the Week. This one again based on just pretty much clicking on the random page found on cryptids.wikia.com and then seeing what comes up and then talking about it here. So this is the one that came up for this week and it's a pretty interesting cryptid. Never heard of this cryptid before, but it is definitely out there when it comes to its weirdness. I mean, this is a cryptid that I've never seen or heard any of its characteristics. Pretty much everything is done that it's done that it does is unique to its own self, and you'll clearly understand what I mean once I finish all of the characteristics tied to this cryptid. And what I'm talking about is the cryptid, a well-known cryptid in Japan that's known as the Kappa, which you'll see a picture of here. The word Kappa apparently comes from a portmanteau of two words there, one being Kawa, which means river, and the other one being Wapa, which means child. And so basically it's considered a river child. And this is because the size of the Kappa is generally regarded as being that of a small man or a small child. So what is the Kappa? I mean, basically you're looking at it, what is considered the most frequent description of the Kappa. It's like a turtle boy or a turtle little man of some sort that has the characteristics of a human, uh, in other words, it has like, a, let's say, kind of like in cartoons whenever you see a dog, but a dog that acts more human or anything involving like a lion and it acts human. Same thing here, but in this case, it has to do with something involving like a turtle and it lives, no surprise, most likely by the sea. And this is because when it comes to the Japanese folklore, that is its habitat. It have it essentially lurks in the waters. The key distinction is, and this is all based on the stories tied down through hundreds of years, some kappa are good, some kappa are mischievous, and then some are just outright bad. So kind of like there's almost like a civilization of sort when it comes to these kappa where some of them are good, some of them are okay, and then some of them are outright bad. And I'll explain the differences between each here in a minute. How they look like, um, some of them have been described as having scaly reptilian skin. The color of them have been described as being from green to yellow or blue. Some of them have that turtle shell, others don't. But the key characteristics between all of them has to do with the top portion of their head. There's an indentation there. Think of it like almost like a friar tuck type indentation where um, it holds water and the reason for this is because the water is its source of power when it goes out of the sea or out of the river or wherever it's coming from and apparently the way it works is once it leaves the water as long as there's water within the indentation then it can move around on land pretty easily but should that water spill out or should that water evaporate then just like a battery running out of energy, it stops until something, whether it's rain or whether it's a human, um, actually fills the indentation back with water and then it is able to move once again. There are interesting stories too about how you can stop a kappa having to do with the indentation and I'll cover that here in a minute. But otherwise, the key thing again within all of the Kappa stories is that indentation and the power that that water has on its body um, and how it moves and how it lives once it's out of water. Now where is the Kappa found? Again, it's in Japan. It has a huge presence there in Japan. You're looking at, in fact, some photo, I'm sorry, um, some drawings of the Kappa throughout the years. I mean, they are hundreds of years old these particular uh, drawings they date back to the 1700s it gives you an idea of how long stories of the kappa have been going around there in japan they're primarily found in ponds and rivers right there in japan um, particularly a location called saga prefecture so much so that there are still places there in japan that warn people about the presence of kappa that seems to be like when it comes to the kappa the belief that everyone that talks about the kappa there know them and talk about them as if they're real i mean that's how much they believe them i'm not saying that they're not real but it, it's to the point where to them it's as real as say 
a bird, like living in some tree, or a monkey, or an orangutan, or a snake. They just consider it another creature that happens to live there near rivers just as much as, let's say again, a snake would in and around a tree. It's just another part of their life there. So they, some of them place warnings uh, whenever you approach certain locations there in Japan about the presence of Kappa, just as warnings are out with regards to uh, watch out, um, the bridge is frozen over, or the bridge is, um, let's say, could potentially go underwater. Same kind of warnings, but in this case it has to do with the Kappa being in and around those areas. Now as far as the Kappa and their characteristics, uh, again I talked about earlier about them being branded into three areas, the good, the okay, and then the bad. Let's talk about the bad ones first. Um, the Kappa on the bad side, those are the ones that can truly be considered bad because they have often been blamed as being water monsters who primarily are the cause of drownings. In fact, that's why the warning signs are out um, whenever you approach certain rivers and certain ponds because the idea is some of these kappa, I don't know how they became bad, but again, it's just like any civilization. Some people are bad, some are not. And the ones that are bad try to lure people into the water and then pull them in. Much like anything involving like an alligator or a crocodile waiting um, on the edge of a water. Here you have a kappa waiting for people to come over. And then once that person is close enough, they'll use what's considered great wrestling skills. And then push them into the water and drown them. So those are the bad ones. And the reason why the kappa apparently do this is because they enjoy drinking people's blood, they enjoy eating their livers, there's apparently a part of a person's soul that they enjoy trying to incorporate. Um, basically, you know, it's just pretty much as a form of them trying to do something to take away the life of a person. Um, other bad kappa have been blamed for essentially um, like terrorizing, victimizing animals, um, especially when it comes to animals that again come near and around certain waters. Uh, so those are the bad ones. Those are the ones that um, that that you try to stay away from. There are even stories of kappa that apparently stalk and rape women as well. Um, so much so to the point that women that have been found impregnated by kappa when they have their offspring, their offspring are not very pretty to look at so much so that um, when that offspring is born think you know a, a merger of these of a human and a kappa then they get immediately killed and buried so those are the bad ones the ones that are the okay ones those are the ones that are more like mischievous they're troublemakers they're the ones that 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 move along the lines of being tricksters they love pulling pranks on people I mean that's their deal um, for example and this is curious one of their pranks is somehow some way they like to be around people just so that they can loudly pass gas so that they can loudly fart right around people so kinda like uh, juveniles somebody that enjoys that kind of pleasure that's the kappa. Those are the ones that are just in the middle range. Others especially like being perverts and they like looking up women's dresses and women's kimonos. They like stalking women um, as they bathe near and around ponds. So those are the ones that, um, again, they're all right. They're, they're on, not on the good side, not really on the bad side. They're just more on the troublemakers. And then there are the ones that are the good ones. These are the ones that, um, that, that, that people worship there in Japan, that they have murals and statues for these kappa. And some of the tales that are tied to the kappa doing good things, uh, one can see exactly why that 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 they are worshipped there and this is what they do uh, apparently a kappa is somebody that loves I guess forgiveness or likes politeness and what I mean is this um, if a kappa is coming near and around your area uh, the best way to repel them if you choose so choose so is to do a deep bow and what happens is the the bow it, it's just in their instinct they'll bow themselves because it's a polite measure to do which is kind of strange to think about it because if there was if this was a kappa that was intending to do a very bad thing 
all of a sudden it kicks in that somebody's bowing to them and so they automatically think oh this is a polite gesture let me go ahead and I'll bow back but when they do that the water spills out from the top of the indentation and then they're frozen so when a person then returns a favor and pours water back into that indentation and, and makes the compa be, uh, essentially become alive again then the kappa will in turn serve that person for eternity and they do good things uh, they apparently get people food like they because of their nature and being so much in the water they can get people very easily um, tons of fish to work with they hunt animals for the people too um, they also uh, like to give gifts what these gifts are I don't know um, as far as like materialistic gifts or what kind of offerings that they have but that they enjoy doing that too um, they also work like they produce and do work for farmers there in lands if, if, if so inclined and apparently it's almost as easy as asking the kappa to do these things for you so it's it's all about politeness it seems like if you run into a good one or a bad one but particularly a a good one if you ask them politely if you bow down then they start in turn acknowledging you in a very nice manner they enjoy a polite company and so in turn they'll start doing good things for them um, some of the other tales tied is they'll help farmers irrigate their land again with regards to fish um, they'll bring so much fish to the people the ones that they like that they'll in turn essentially give them a good fortune some of them are also knowledgeable about medicine to the point that if somebody within a family let's say has some kind of illness or some has, has something wrong with themselves like a bone of some sort some something that's broken they'll in turn either teach the people how to fix it or they'll fix it for them and all of these traits again make the people that they come across um, worship them and, and try to encourage them to continue to do good things so it's almost like a symbiotic relationship where um, you do good to the kappa and the kappa will really do well for yourself another interesting thing that people do is whenever they come across um, let's say a pond or a river that's particularly known to house these kappa what they'll do is their favorite thing in the world is cucumbers I don't know why but it just the way it is and so what they'll do is the parents especially will take cucumbers and write the names of their children on the cucumber and then throw them in the water and the idea is um, this will ensure that the kappa um, will in turn somehow some way they'll find the cucumbers and associate that name with that parents child and they'll either like do a form of protection towards the child to ensure the child doesn't drown or they'll in turn be promised by the kappa that they won't do anything bad to the family as they bathe or as they do whatever they're doing there in the pond or in the river and this is all again a form of of, of, of a way of ensuring that if you do something good to the kappa then the kappa will do good to you interesting don't you think um, the idea that there's something like this out there that is so polite that um, if you do something for them they'll in turn almost move mountains for you and the idea that again that they're pretty much doing this to this day um, is, is again very fascinating because uh, I find the idea that there are signs that's, that are saying um, that there's kappa and around those places that, that that's pretty interesting that that's almost to this day still present now what are the kappa misinterpreted for and the idea of what they really are some people have said that they're another other than uh, the Japanese giant salamander which you'll see a picture of here um, these salamanders um, live there around the, around the ponds upon the rivers they feed on insects frogs and fish but also because of their size they may have been known to try to feed on larger animals so the idea that somebody could be thinking oh okay um, I'm looking at something from far away um, it looks like a person almost and it certainly is bringing in that small animal towards the river in an aggressive manner somebody could misinterpret that giant salamander as being a kappa itself and I can see that I mean um, if you are looking at it from far away especially like let's say it's towards the night or some sort then um, then I can definitely see how people can misinterpret it um, others believe that it's just another 
enchanted creature, something that lives there in the forest for hundreds of years, unknown exactly like how long the Kappa lived themselves, but at least their civilization has been around for a long, long time, and they just happen to be another entity, somebody that lives there in the forest, as I said at the very beginning, no different than any other snake or any other bird. <clears throat> they just live there themselves. Um, another final interesting note when it comes to the kappa, um, if if someone is there in Japan and they happen to run across a kappa, let's say especially a kappa that is uh, eating on something, maybe a horse or a cow, um, the idea is if a kappa is caught right there in the act, um, you can actually make the kappa apologize. I, I don't know how, but apparently the kappa maybe due to their politeness, whenever they're caught in the act of something, they immediately try to apologize uh, for what they're doing. And you can make a kappa apologize in person in writing. How people do that, I don't know. Um, I wish there was something as far as like actual handwritten stuff from kappas or proclaimed kappas showcasing that writing but again it ties to the idea that whenever a kappa is uh, being polite um, you can make sure that if they get caught in some kind of act that you can force them to write because they'll be profusely trying to apologize interesting no again all of these ideas and the uniqueness tied to the kappa so what do you guys think the kappa i mean is there anything else that i missed does anybody know any other particular characteristics i, I mentioned at the very beginning this is one of the most unique cryptids that i've ever heard and i hope that after explaining all of this that um, you uh, believe that too. So if anyone has any other tales tied, please post your comments. It'll be fascinating to hear, especially if someone has any stories, um, more recent ones with regards to the Kappa there in Japan. Uh, that's their only known location, so if anyone has anything else outside of Japan, that'll also be fascinating to hear. Alright everybody, thanks again as always. Take care.